Okay, I, uh, I'm gonna start this really weird. Okay. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, okay, that was dumb. <laughs> Just edit that out. <laughs> Today, we have a very special collab. Hello folks, I'm Robin C. Lurk and welcome to my channel. As some of you know, I just got back from Playlist. Playlist is a YouTube convention and specifically I went because I got to meet up with four big time awesome artist YouTubers. We're talking Mira Byler, Hello Alice, Super A Dizzle, and Chloe Rose Art. I had never met these people before, but we went immediately into splitting a hotel room and becoming old chummy pals. The trip was really incredible for a number of reasons. Being around people making such similar type of content to me was really nice. Community. Some highlights from the trip. We got to meet So Craftastic, Illimation, Emmy Raichu. Hopefully I said those all right. We also got tickets to the Playlist Live official party and got to meet Tana Mojo, Andrew Lau, and well, I kind of danced near Ricky Dillon, which was cool. <laughs> but absolutely the highlight for all of us was starting to build out the artist community and have some in-person experiences. While all of us are making similar type art YouTube content online, we're each very different artists and have different focuses. Says. Over the years, all of us have done artist hack videos, and since that's something I love to do on this channel, let's do a highlights reel of some of their top artist hacks. The trip was really booked and we had a tight schedule, so my portion of our collaborations is done over Skype, but we have a playlist of other videos that we made collectively, which I will link in the description along with all of their channels and in the end screen as well. Hey, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, wait, maybe I'll get to cut this and start over. Do you, like, okay. do people know that you're Miranda? Yeah, I got chewed out because people said I was copying Miranda Sings. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna shorten this anyway. It's easier for branding. So, Mira Byler. Okay. My first hack is these little mechanical pencils. And they're basically Pilot Color Eno pencils. I like to use these when I do Copic marker drawings and when I do watercolor drawings, but they kind of dissolve into your medium. So if you're not somebody who likes to erase your stuff and you just like to jump into it or you don't like those pencil lines, this is a really good way to like get around that. Is that good? <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> the next hack, if you are on a budget and you like your stuff to be really framed and pristine looking, but you don't want to go out and you don't want to spend buku bucks on a frame. What you can do is go to Michael's and they have these wooden plaques. I don't know, they're like two or three bucks. And what you can do is you can paint them on the edges with whatever color paint you want. I like to do gold because I feel like my stuff is in a museum then or something. So I'll show you an example of one that I did. It's kind of like a vintage animal vibe. And I paid like three dollars for the plaque. So, yeah, I didn't have to frame it. Yay! Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, bye. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm gonna go over some of her hacks today. Uh, well, this is something I know that you do. Um, this is with the daylight bulbs. And uh, was I supposed to start with that one? Yeah. Daylight bulbs are great if you do YouTube, for example, because you get that more professional look as opposed to like an orangey light, which a lot of us newbie YouTube artists used to do. When you're making artwork, it's always really good to replicate daylight as best as possible. So you're able to really work with the colours that you know are true to the colours. And also, it's really great for taking photos of your art as well. Who's that Instagram following? Yeah. <laughs> um, I found this online a little while ago. It's basically using a magic eraser, which... I'm not sure what they're called if you don't live in the US, but they're essentially like white sponges. They're about that thick and this 
about that big. Um, you dab them with water and you squeeze them out. Um, and if you have a dried watercolour piece that you don't like or there's pieces on it you don't like, if you just gently rub the magic eraser over the watercolour, it will get rid of the watercolour entirely. <gasps> Look, it's actually working. It's actually working. It really is a magic eraser, it does, it gets rid of watercolour. Just be gentle, because it will like ruin your paper if you're too abrasive. <laughs> Let's go into your foam hacks. <laughs> okay, um, so I like foam for my paintbrushes. Uh, you can use either pool noodles or the little uh, insulation things for like copper pipes. Basically they're like little foam things that you can cut slits in and you can have your paintbrushes attached to them. So whether you're drying them upside down or you want to store them, it's just a great way to kind of have them separate as opposed to all bunched up together. Um, something that I thought about myself a little while ago in my old video was uh, using those green flower things. You put like artificial plants in, you can get like a block of it. Stick your paintbrushes into that and you can do it separately so you can always visually see which paintbrush is which so you're not like scrambling through a bunch of paintbrushes in a cup to see which one is the one you want. Um, so it's just good to like organize them and dry them I suppose. <laughs> this next hack is something I'm really excited about and want to try on my own for repairing paintbrushes. I, I abuse all of my paintbrushes, honestly. I don't take care of them whatsoever, so they're either frayed or somehow bent. If you take some real hard hold hair gel and you put it and you reshape the paintbrush between your fingers, like when it's dry, um, and then you can take like a hair dryer or a blow dryer and dry it out with the gel on it, and it will kind of like seal it in that shape. So the next time you use it, it'll kind of be held a little bit better than it was. <laughs> So I actually just tried this and it did work surprisingly well. Tips though. I'm gonna test it right now though to see what we got after just like five minutes of it being newly formed. Now that it's wet, it's already starting to break the adhesive hold. I really do believe you have to allow the gel to sit on the brush to really make it hold its shape over time so that when it gets wet, it doesn't just immediately go back to its frayed state. But what do you guys think? Have you tried this before? Does it work? Okay, thanks Chloe. Hey, problem. Bye. Hello. Hi. My boyfriend to set up the ring light. I was just trying to get better lighting for Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Alice, or hello Alice. I will start with the simpler hack, I guess, or the more direct hack, um, which I totally forgot what it was. I remember. Oh, I remembered again. Can I start that again? <laughs> yeah. Whenever I am sketching in my sketchbook with graphite, one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy is when it smudges like all over the page or if it transfers onto the next page. I just feel like it limits my options when I'm sketching. I will actually paint watercolor over the top of the graphite. And the reason that I do this instead of hairspray is because it's really quick and easy. If I'm on the go, I can just throw a layer of watercolor over the graphite. It will seal the graphite in so that it doesn't smudge around the page or it doesn't get onto the next page in your sketch book, which makes me happy. <laughs> Alice's next hack is going to be more technically helpful for painters, especially watercolorists. What I do when I am starting all of my watercolor paintings is I think it's really important to do a limited color palette under painting. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help you establish your shadows and it's gonna help you establish the overall atmospheric tone of the piece, whether it's a very warm piece in the sunlight or a cool piece, I will use a shading color, usually a cool tone, purple, blue. I will paint all the shadows in my piece very lightly and this way I have a guide so that when I'm painting in the colors later, I already know where the shadows are, know what the values of the piece are, and I can establish contrast right from the start. The colors will peek through and give your painting an overall cohesive look. All right, bye, bye guys. <laughs> Um, I'll just start talking about whatever, because this is a test. Okay, well, anyway, I went to the grocery store today, and then, I don't know, it just stunk like fish in the... <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> fish in the desert just does not mix out, dude. Oh, <laughs> no. I got a sail crab. Our house smelt like bad fishy <laughs> crab, and it clung to all, like, the fabric in the um... house. The, like, interior fleece lining of my coat. You know how puffy coats, like, you put your arms down, it just, like, yeah. <laughs> puffs up? So, like, I would do that, and it would just, like, fish scent. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Oh, that's <laughs> okay, I, uh, I'm gonna start this really weird. 
Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, okay, that was dumb. <laughs> Just edit that out. <laughs> Hey Robin, thank you so much for having me here on your channel. I think you've been on mine for quite some time now, so it's like a really big honor to be on yours finally. Like, I've, it's always been like a little dream of mine to be on your channel, so I'm really Aww. excited for that. <laughs> so these are the ones that I personally use like all the time. They're art hacks that everybody can use of every skill level, and honestly, like a lot of these were developed from, you know, being in a small town and not having access to big art stores and, you know, not having any money to buy anything online. So. These are the art hacks that I still use to these to this day. Okay, how was that? Okay, that was so good. <laughs> if, if any of you guys who are watching this are from my channel, you guys know I do this like literally every single video. A Jelly Roll white highlight pen, which can be kind of pricey, you know. These run for about six dollars for a pack of two or three. In place of that, I use white out correction pens from the Dollar Tree. Now these are 50 cents for two. Now the reason I use these is because they are basically designed to go over any surface, any mistakes that you have, and they work so incredibly good when it comes to highlight. Now on my channel, you guys, I have tested against like white colored pencils, the uh, white pens that I was just talking about, and these by far are so much better. Honestly, a cheaper than anything you can get with anything online, anything else that I've been able to find. So 10 out of 10, would recommend. So what I do is I get a blending tool slash blending stump slash tortillion, and whenever it gets dirty, instead of just throwing it away, I get an eraser, and then I just like scrub it off. Like all the charcoal that I have on there, all the graphite on there, it comes right off. And basically you get like a whole entire new blending stump all over again. 10 out of 10, again, would recommend. <laughs> Thank you so much again for having me on my, on, on my channel. <laughs> I, I, on my channel. It's such an honor. It's something I literally have always wanted to do. So thank you so much. And guys, uh, subscribe to Robin. And Aww. I will see you guys both later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you will check out everyone's links and videos in the description. Support these lovely ladies. Support me if you want to subscribe. My social media is Robin Sealark across the board. And hopefully I'll see you in a week in my next video. Bye.